Hi, and welcome to the first ever episode of Slice. You guys are asking, what is Slice? Slice is a sermon review program and a review show where we talk about sermons on Sunday and Wednesday. This is the show where we can cut deep, deep into the word, share your excerpts, what did you learn, what did the spirit drop in your heart, this is the place to do it. I know we may be constrained with time, but here on the show, we go straight to the point. We're talking to everybody and anyone who cares to grow in the spirit. This is a show that is always going to be aired every week. So stay tuned, subscribe to Have Access TV, and let's make ourselves full of the spirit and let's eat the spiritual food. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Sometimes prayer is like cooking food. It's not about putting the food on fire. You will have to leave the food on fire until the food is done. Hi, my name is Shibomi, and this is Slice, our pre and post service show of Harvesters International Christian Center. Today, we're going to be talking about something very, very important. This is the untold story of Awakening 2022. That has been one of the most powerful events in the history of Harvesters. And today, we want to show you a side of it, or rather, a first-class side of it, because that service was not streamed. I am not here alone. Today, I'm here with Wale, and I'm here with Komen. Hi, how are you guys doing? Hi, Shubomi. Nice to be here. Yes, nice to be here. You guys really look good. Thank you. I mean, the glory of awakening yes, is there. Absolutely. I mean, I, I noticed, you know, uh, Kome in awakening, she was just full of it. The, the Holy Spirit was using her as a vessel. <laughs> and, you know, all those things we're going to talk about it. And I know Wale also was somewhere and he felt the presence of God. I felt the presence of God here. I have never had an experience before. And today we're going to talk about it. I'm going to show you, or we are going to show you, a side of awakening that was awesome so come here, tell me okay. how was awakening awakening for me was mind-blowing it was definitely a defining moment for me and it came with lots of confirmation and assurance yeah lots of confirmation assurance yes. Wally, i know you have to, i mean <laughs> awakening was just that moment where you sit down and recalibrate and rethink everything that you know and pretty much look at your convictions again and begin to think okay this Christianity thing that we're doing, what exactly is it about? It was, it was, it was, it was reshaping. That's what I was saying. Reshaping. I mean, it was, it was awesome. I've been in Harvesters for quite some time now, and I can vividly remember before we started the event, we we, we prayed in the office because I'm a staff here. I mean, you all don't staff here, and we prayed in the office and we said, Lord God, we want this to be very special. Like we don't want it to be like any other event. And in the office, we saw episodes of how the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gave us a sample mm. of what was to come, not only for us, not only for the church, but for the people as well. I remember a member of staff in the office. I mean, the Holy Spirit just had a good time with this guy for a whole day. He was weeping like a child. Mm. And while he was weeping, I looked at myself like, what is this guy experiencing what is going through his body i mean i know a lady a very close friend of mine as well she was weeping all day and i'm like is this how you handle people and i came to day one and i was on my seat just brushed right behind the senior pastor and i felt this peace of mind now this peace of mind was not the peace that Oh, I'm fine. I felt this peace of mind that there's something in me. There was somebody with me and there's something around me. And I began to weep. I began to weep. And I started noticing that there was a vacuum that was just expanding. Yeah. It was expanding. It was expanding. It felt oh, myster oh. mysterious to me because I'd never felt like that before. You know, I, I, I was talking to somebody. I said, I've given my life to Christ for a while now. I've seen what the Holy Spirit can do. I have heard what the Holy Spirit can do. But for the first time, in a long time that I was aware of, I felt what the Holy Spirit did to me. So it was a personal encounter. Wow. That encounter was, was it was mind blowing. I thought it was just me. Then I saw you in day one 
and I just saw God just use you. Wow. And I said, maybe on this show, I'm just going to ask, what happened to you? What happened to you that Hallelujah. I don't know? I mean, you know, when Pastor B came on stage, he said something. He said there are different types of meetings. He said there, there are teaching meetings. He said there are um, worship meetings, mm -hmm. and there are the Holy Spirit kind of meeting, a yeah. catching meeting. And for me, you know, awakening was a catching meeting. If you notice, there were many times that, you know, due to the words that were coming, you, the seat couldn't contain you in yeah. any longer. Of like course. you had to, you had to rise up because a lot of things were resonating with my spirit. Like there were times that the visions that came, the pictures that came were like what I was seeing, what I was seeing and I was like, ah, it was mind blowing for me. And at a time, the highlight for me for day one was when, you know, there was a particular ministration for the women. That's because yeah. that's it emphasizes the place of preparation. Yeah. We had prepared. Mm. We had we had cried. And for me, it makes me just encourage other people that, you know, what is it that you're truly asking God for? What is it that you're truly desiring? When you come for meetings, it's an opportunity to get a confirmation and yeah. to receive. Yeah. And for me, awakening was just a receiving moment. That's why I said, for me, it was, it was mind blowing. It was just like a confirmation. It was like, like, his, like Pastor B said, it was uh, like increased ability. Wow. So for a lot of things Definitely. that God told me, it was just like I was receiving the ability yeah. to become all that God had called me to be. Yes. And it was, it, it, was, was, it, it, was, it was, was such a blessing. I mean, and when I saw uh, Kome on day one, I knew that she got, now that you, you're saying it, I now understand yeah. what happened to you. Yeah. So Wally, what was your own experience? My experience was very funny in that I was sitting down and I was with my wife and we were watching and I just, there was just a gusher and I was telling her what God had told me many years ago that I had forgotten. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it was, it, it woke up in me again. And I was telling her the words that the Lord had been speaking. In fact, there were words that God had spoken even this year that somehow I just forgot them, but it did just woke up in my spirit. And so we had a prayer meeting after this. We had a prayer after the service ended. And the first, that was day one, after day one ended. And we were praying and we couldn't stop praying. So the prayer entered into the prayer that the women were doing as, at the same time also. And we just had to stop because she had to be a part of that prayer meeting. But I was, so I continued and it was just amazing because God now started to reveal stuff. He started to tell me new, new things that were the same old things that he had been saying. Only now they were new because I got perspective. So it, it seemed like all this while I had been I've been listening to one plus one, but all of a sudden now yeah. I know what calculus you is. Calculus you is understand? Exactly. So yeah. like it just expanded the horizon and I was sitting down there and I was thinking, my God. So now it's quite, it's quite, it's quite, it's quite amazing that I see where God, I see what God wants me to do next. I don't yet see where God is taking me, but I have like, I'm listening and he's saying do this and he's saying do that and it's amazing just to be able to hear him on a constant basis. Yeah. It's it's amazing. Awakening was awakening was just a moment it was a, to I, reawaken all reawaken, that. Exactly. exactly. Because you said something very profound. You said this is not just a meeting. Yeah. It, it, it's a calling meeting. And you know, when we were praying about it, you know, God told me something. God told me something in my spirit. He said for so long, we have made him a tenant in his house. Mm. So he said, for the first time, I want to, I want the church to give me an avenue to make me the homeowner. Hallelujah. Do you understand? So yeah. it was not a matter of God, your rent has expired. This was like, God, this is your house. We are the tenant. Yes. We are coming in. And mm -hmm. when we walked in day one, I knew my spirit, I just felt it that something was strange Hallelujah. because you see, the meeting was so powerful that the Holy Spirit humbled everybody. That's right. Irrespective of your status, That's irrespective right. of wherever you're coming from, the Holy Spirit said, you know what, as far as you are here, you are naked. Mm -hmm. I don't care what you have. You've come here to receive. In as much as you have come here, the grace will drop upon you. That's right. You don't need to ask. 
or it's just going to drop. And we just had that moment, and I knew that Wednesday was just there. And you know, when Pastor B climbed the stage, I knew in my heart, I said, God, whatever it is you're going to give him, you just have to give him. Because we've been praying 21, we were pray fasting for 21 days. So I couldn't have fasted for nothing. That's right. So it was as if God knew that everyone here had fasted and they are now here to receive. That's right. So the moment they took it, boom, everything just went. So the question I wanted to ask you because Pastor B prayed for the uh, women on that day. Yeah. And for some reason, after the fasting, I mean, you might have seen the video of T.D. Jakes handing over That's right. a bit into his, uh, amazing. his daughter, his amazing daughter and everything. Moment. And praying for women that day could not have been a coincidence because That's Pastor right. is praying for women saying, we need women that will take over the world. And T.D. Right. Jakes gives over, you know, and women are actually doing wonderful stuff wonderful right stuff. now. So Great. what are the aspirations you see when it comes to the women's ministry? Oh, yeah. Generally. You know, personally, um, Prior till then, that's why I told you for me, awakening was a confirmation meeting because prior till then, God had given the women instructions on tarrying with him in the 21 days in a corporate meeting. Yeah. And that corporate meeting was God specifically told us that it was not a place for us to bring our own prayer points, but it was a pr place for him to release what he wanted us to do. Wow. And I kept emphasizing in that meeting that the Lord is doing a lot with mm -hmm. the women and you know by the time pastor balaji came on stage one of the things he said that made so much meaning to me was it's a season of stepping out yeah. and you know for me yeah. that stepping out yeah. was what he was doing with us because he yeah. told us that he was going to release the batch of people that had been faithful mm -hmm. you know in that 21 days because it was time for us to step out yeah. it was time for us to become all that he had placed on us meaning that women who were voices to the nations women who were voices in church to be like you know bring people into their purpose into their destiny yeah. and the mini pastor b laid his hands on us was a commissioning yes. like in the place Great of the road so it was so like you know there was a point pastor balaji also told me for me it, it was a defining moment because personally for me my experience was I already knew that the call of God was seemingly upon my life, but you know, just the same way God did to Saul, he had called Saul, but the minute Samuel laid his hands on Saul, that wow. was the commissioning. That's and for it. me, Pastor B laying his hand, it, it wasn't a coincidence. They mm. didn't like, for him to say that he saw in a vision while he was praying and mm. God told him to pray for the women, was just, was just so spot on. Yeah. And you know, I believe, and the Sarah Jake's meeting, just made it like the seal that, was that the women that the was women it. are on another level. Yeah, it's a new season and for us. And the important thing Sorry. about that that TD Jakes and daughter moment was it gave women the essence that gender does not matter. Anymore. That's right. It's just a thing of mantle. That's right. Whether you are a man or a woman, whether That's you're right. a boy or a girl, That's if right. I see that you can do it, you can do it. So, I mean, that is just the honest because right That's now, right. When I was doing a personal prayer time, there's a revival coming. And whoever can catch, that's right. It's gonna catch it. That's true. But this is just day one we're talking about. What I want us to really, really focus on Wally is day three. <laughs> day three awakening 2022. Come here. Wait, that was your moment. I know. <laughs> and you are laughing. Please, she's gonna tell us what happened. Please tell us what happened. Day three, like I was going through the pictures. And all I could just see were times where I was on the floor, where I was slain under the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And for me, it emphasized the need of the Holy Spirit. Mm. Because, you know, there's a part in the Bible that told us that God said that he would give us the person of the Holy Spirit, who is the revealer. Mm. And, you know, on every journey that we have in life, you cannot get to where God is calling you to be or where God is taking you without the person of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And for me, like, that day three, Everything, everything, the Holy Spirit was more real, <laughs> more real, his hand upon my life, you know, making the journey that he has called me to much more clearer to me was everything. And my highlight was Pastor B's mantle on me. Oh my God. That was it. That was oh much. my God. That was, that was oh much. my God, you know. And there's such a significant grace of revelation upon Pastor B. And you know, immediately after that meeting, 
having to go back to the women and lead them, I've seen a triple grace on revelation knowledge wow. upon my life. It is real. Wow. It is wow. real. And I give God all the glory. Ah, definitely. I call that night the swearing in ceremony. Yeah. Swearing in Yeah, because I think I like so I think um, we, we have been in fasting and all that. That was like our pruning moment of, you know, so I know about swearing in, whether it's for kings or for presidents and all that. You know, there's always times when there is a lot of work that will go in. There'll be these other ceremonies, little, little ceremonies preparing in, but then the swearing in ceremony is when you are given your staff of authority. Yeah. So that was what day three was. Day three was the staff of authority because you could just say that people were just getting their staffs, their mantles. They were prepared for the first two days to receive because what was coming and what is coming. So um, if you read the book of Daniel chapter 9, you would really see where God is taking us into. He's taking us into a place where we are taking dominion. We are, take, we are not just... We are not just, it's not just church. And so he's releasing mantles that will actually make people go to those seven mountains yes. and take it. Yes. And then we're now going to stop being church in church. We're now church on the streets. We're now church in the marketplace. We're now going to be the ones dictating. And I've seen that at work just in, in Kenya. See how the church was able to influence the presidential elections. And that is where God is moving Thank us you. into. We are no more going to be just a community church. We are now going to be the church that is dictating policies. It's pretty much taking us back to where the church was. The kingdom church. Exactly. Okay. So for the few um, for the few moments we have, we're just going to show you clips of what happened in day three. So just watch this and you know, just just get blown away. This is what I want you to do. If you believe. If anybody is putting their hands on their body and you are close to them and you believe that you have received of the Spirit, anywhere they are, just go ahead and put your hands on their shoulder. I want you to join their faith with us and command the sickness to go. Listen, you've done the first job. You prayed for them, right? Ask them what they could not do before. Ask them to do it three times. Ask them to do what they could not do before. Ask them to do it three times. Ask them. Once they are healed, you and them come out together. You prayed for her. Oh my God. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, you prayed for him. Ah, yeah, yeah, I told you. You prayed for her. Ah, yeah. I told you that you are receiving now. Hey, hey. Look at that. My God. You prayed for her. Come with them. What did you pray for? You prayed for your mom. Hold on. Come, come, come. Mama, come, son, come. I love this one. Hey, hey, hey. What was wrong with your mom? She had open sore for more than three to four years. Uh huh. They've tied the leg. They've done everything to the leg, but no. So what happened when you so prayed for her? She put her hands on their shoulder to pray. For yeah. Her. I placed my hands there, and I was just speaking in the spirit, and she felt something. What did you feel, Mama? There is no pain anymore. <laughs> Okay. okay, you know the Holy Spirit ministered to me, and He said, "There are some people that are obviously going to look at it and say, oh, okay, me that didn't hear anything, me that didn't um, understand it, probably like the first timers that came into church. How can they relate, and how can they reach out? Like, I want this to be an experience in my life. You know, personally, um, first of all, being in that environment alone." You must come to a place to believe yeah. that whatsoever that is happening in the church yeah. is resting upon me. And it can be resting on each and every one of us in different measures. Mm -hmm. Now for you, it can just be like a call to really know this God we speak about. Mm -hmm. You know, to another person, it can just be love being poured out on you. Like, I have a sense of belonging. I really want this Jesus. I want to know him. To another person, it can be a time of service. Yeah. You have stayed too long enough in the crowd, in the crowd yeah. and you need to come out. You need to, to use that increased grace and ability to begin to see yourself in a new fashion. There's some people that, you know, the enemy has oppressed them for so long, like they, don't, they, they, don't, they won't amount to much, yeah. or there's nothing to them. Yeah. But being in that meeting is an assurance. awakening to say, 
I know who I am in Christ. Yeah. God has called me to be this person and irrespective of whatever the enemy says, I will become that person, mm. you know? So a lot of things. Mm. So we just have to, you know, I, I want somebody watching out there to be able to say, every time I come into the presence of God, it's an assurance. It's an awakening that this potential, the minute you give your life to Christ, there is a deposit of grace yes. upon your life to come to know the person of Jesus, to come to a place of fellowship with him, exactly. koinonia, intimacy, mm. before you now move to the place of service. Yeah. So for me, every time anybody comes into this meeting or fellowships with us in church, it's an opportunity to know that, okay, God loves me. Exactly. I'm truly not all that the enemy says I am. Exactly. And I'm ready and I'm to be ready. who God wants me to be. Because th that's, that's so powerful. That was what I was praying in, at the, I was just right there. And all I was doing was shedding tears. And you know, that Friday proved to me that there's a difference between prayer requests and prayer points. Mm -hmm. I had prayer requests, but the Holy Spirit said, let's put your prayer requests aside. This is your prayer point. Mm -hmm. My prayer point on my knees in tears was, I have gone around this mountain to worship. I am tired of this mountain. Thy will be done, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, thy kingdom come. And mm. I was just on my knees. I didn't get the opportunity to have that mantle placed on me. I probably was on the floor. I was not myself. I was crying all day. But I could see that I was in the presence of God. And God was saying, as long as you're here with me naked. That's right. It's okay. But the day you rise, rise a king and do what I've ordained you to. So that was... That was the moment for me in day three. Awesome moment. And what was so funny was, I've seen people that had some level of stiffness, like people are falling, I'm not gonna fall. I mean, it's a thing of the mind, you know. And I see those people falling, they're rolling. <laughs> I see some people are catching them. I mean, I saw an usher catching someone and the moment she caught that person, the usher fell off by herself. So we had two people that were just there. And the photographers, the video guys, everybody lost it. Technically, the angels were doing the, the technical works and everything. So, it was mind-blowing. It was mind-blowing. And this thing you said is very key to me. I don't know if it's key to anyone here. I met a lady. She felt that calling was not her thing. She struggled with the person of the Holy Spirit. And I mean, trust me, this event started at 6 p.m. West African time, we we're here to 11. So that was like a two hours service, just extended to like midnight. And we had people cry. And this thing you said about, I'm not worthy, I'm not, I'm not called to it and everything. I saw a lady for the first time accepting that this is what I'm called into. This is what I'm called into. I know you you mentor people. Yeah. How was it for them? It was, it was um, it, like I said, I think the perfect word for me is a defining moment because people were able to now understand the picture, understand the purpose of God upon their life. Yeah. People were able to say, okay, I truly want this. You know, you were talking about people being slayed and um, the intense presence of the Holy Spirit being di displayed in the meeting. It took me back to the meetings of Kenneth Hagin that I've watched. Yes. Kenneth Hagin's meetings were spiritual meeting. meetings. Yes, like people would literally meeting. be dancing, some people were laughing, some people, some people were running, yeah. some people were talking. And it being practically replicated in this service, I knew that the, it, it was a Holy Spirit meeting yeah. where everybody was receiving in different capacities and different measures. Mm. So, and so, to me, um, whenever you step into church, it's an opportunity to know that I belong here. Yeah. This is where God wants me to be. Cool. So it's, it's, to me, I look forward to it. Like, I couldn't have imagined my life without Jesus. So, so, it would have been a loss. So, so a great amazing. Loss. So, so great amazing. Loss. Wale, you were not privileged to be here. So, <laughs> I just need to explain it to people that were not there. Yeah. Because of the feelings that I had then, it was. It was one of those nights when you sit down in your chair and you are helpless and you realize for once that when Moses said, 
if your presence doesn't go with us, we can't leave this place. You realize what it means because you are helpless and you're like, obviously I can't do this. Obviously, this is not my race. Awakening was that moment where you would actually be pruned from self. So, um, yeah, it's it's great to be smart. It's great to be intelligent. It's great to be it's great to be brilliant. It's great to know how to do. It's great to know, but it's even greater when you know that there is a hand that carries you, and that hand that is carrying you is not carrying you through because you know how to go through. And so, I was helpless, and all I could say was, "God help me." And he gave me reassuring words. One of the words he had spoken to me, and he kept bringing back to me, and as you were speaking now, he came back to me again, it's John 7, 38. And it's, he that believeth in me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now, one of, the, one of the things that I realized is we use that scripture to say, oh, the rivers will flow out of me. But then before it flows out of you, it fills you up. It's only a cup that is full that overflows. And so one thing that people would really get out of this is that there must be the tiring moment where you will be filled. If not, you would be dispensing what you do not have. And like the seven sons of Skiva, they will go out and then the devil will ask them, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know. <laughs> you understand what I mean? And it's, it's, it's just amazing because you'll find out that in the house of God, there is so much you can get. There is so much you can get. All you have to do is just, like you said, and which is very spot on. Once you remember that God loves you and it's not because you love him, it's because, in fact, the only reason we love him is because he loved us, right? He's, he's, he gave a sacrifice first before we actually decided to do this journey. So his love is immense. His love is overflowing. It's unending. And so when we come into that place and we plug into that love, there is so much it brings back into us that for me, I was helpless and I just said, God, help me. Because if, if you can help me, then I will get out of this and I'll become everything you want me to be. Because it is all it is. God help me. God help me. And honestly, every day, that is all I, that's, that's my, there's no, um, and I'm not saying God help me, oh, I, I need this or I need that. No, God help me to do what you want. Because it's, it's, it's amazing how our prayer, our prayer requests is, oh, I want a car, I want a house, I want this, I want that, I want a spouse, I want this. But when you realize that there is more to, there is more to life than all these things, then you begin, to, you begin to understand what it means when God says that there is, an, there is inheritance for you. Inheritance is not wealth. It's not material wealth. Inheritance is way spiritual. And only God can help. Only God can give it. And like I said, it was a swearing in ceremony. Trust me. We're yet to see what God is, what God, what God is doing. But like He said, He will reveal it to us. But it's in faces. So um, we'll see some people. For some people, it's a, it's a sprint. It's a hundred meter dash. For some people, it's a. 400 meter dash for some people is 1200 for some people is a city marathon and the most important thing is at the end of the day we are all doing god's work and i'm just i'm just excited for what's coming i'm just so excited the, the, the thing about it is when i look at you 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 were talking about women right now i have someone who is a volunteer she, she's not in the country she stays she's jamaican and uh, she stays in America, she's in New York. She told me day three, we were not streaming it, but she knew that there was something happening in Lagos, Nigeria, mm. that was upon her in New York. Mm. She had to call me the very next day, the Saturday morning, and said, I, I don't know what happened, mm -hmm. but I knew there was a presence on me. I don't know where it came from, I don't know why it happened, but I knew. She, she knew, she, she was like, this is not an illness, this is not something. She knew that this was a presence. And we are in Nigeria. 
and awakening has presence all the way down to America and beyond. Because we even have people in North Korea, in Korea, sorry, that felt it. They were like, something is happening on Earth. Some people have touched something. And it's affecting us. Because while I was praying, I was praying for my team and I was like, Lord, wherever they are, let the presence of God touch them. And God honored us. You know, when we were not there to experience the Azusa revival, but I can proudly say that the awakening was my Azusa revival. It was my Azusa revival. Like, yeah. I could feel it in my legs. Like, I, got, I was driving on the road. I'm pretty much sure it's the spirit I was driving. Because all that was in my it was like electricity. When I got home to my wife, we couldn't say anything to each other. She was in another campus. I was here with the in, in weekend in campus. And we're just looking at each other. We couldn't say a word because current was flowing everywhere. So, I mean, nobody wants to break the flow. Nobody wants to break the flow. And you said something that is very great, which I want you to address people because people think, oh, I had a past. Why should the Holy Spirit come upon me? I did something yesterday. Maybe you even did something on the day three. But the honest truth is, God doesn't, if He sees your heart and you're willing, he doesn't really go for that. Yes. And I know you have ground experiences with that because I mean, I mean, I know that you are into young ladies and you mentor them, you put the spirit of God in them. Can you give us can you give us a taste of what the future would look like after awakening? Because you have collected a mantle, now you're gonna to pass to others. So yeah. what is that taste? What are the we expecting? Privilege. It's a privilege. Well, for me, um, a place of mentorship is not mentoring what I think, but it's mentoring what the father thinks. Mm. So, yeah, what the father again, thinks. Let's, let's take a it. place let's, of let's mentorship. Yeah, please look at, let's okay. look, just look at this. I love that. A yeah. place of mentorship for me is not what I think. It's not my experience, but it's what the father thinks and what he wants the people that he's sending my mm. way to experience. You understand? And so for me, um, he has called me to make sure that the new set of people that, that are arising carry the discipline, the hunger mm. for his kingdom mm. and not just um, people that just say, oh, I'm fascinated by, uh, I want to do this, but without being in a place of desire and mm. brokenness. Because the Bible says a contract and a broken spirit I will not reject. Meaning that you must first go through process. In the kingdom of God, there's process. A process of your desire reaching out to him. Then he draws you in and he begins to mold you to all that. Meaning a place of total surrender. You will first be the sacrifice. Surrender and sacrifice. That this relationship between me and you, I desire it. Then when you get to a place of understanding your place in Christ, then you begin to chase after it. You begin to say, Father, I want to be more. And for you to be more, you will first submit to service. You will first submit to, to pruning and developing yourself. And that's where the place of prayer comes in. Discipline with prayer, discipline with spending time and digesting the word of God, meditating on it, so Very that you will eventually become. The Bible says, as we look upon, we look onto the glass, we become. So you stay in the place of prayer and studying about Jesus. It's not a place of asking. Mm -hmm. It's not a place of your own desire. It's not a place of want. It's a place, the Bible says, thy kingdom come, thy will be will done be on earth. There is a method of prayer that the Lord gave us. So you begin to pick up the desires of the Father. His will be done on earth his ways, his, his desires, and you understand that you are a vessel to communicate that power of God. So, you know, a lot of your own path desires begins to drop. drop. And the truth is, I don't like to call it, it begins to drop, but as you pick up the desires of God, your own desires are merged into it. And your life has so much more meaning than you ever thought it could be being the head of this. There's nothing wrong with that, but Everything matters in where God has called you to be because at that point you are, you are fulfilling God's purpose at the same time receiving the blessings 
that come with the purpose. So if you are even called to be in the marketplace and be the head of um, a bank or be the head of a chartered institution, the most important thing is that you are fulfilling God's calling. So you don't just only have to specify in that role alone. You become a mentor. You become God's vessel. Also displaying character, display, and these are the things that you get in the place of molding, character, discipline, mm. and you know, and through your own life, through, and God teaches you a method, a method of, of creation, like receiving from him and discipline, meaning that you're not about cheating people, you're yes. not about, so all these things are the yes. things that you now begin to model out as a child of God. Yes. And people that come in, you know, through your own dedication to God, they're able to receive both known and unknown. You know, when you are a vessel of God, sometimes you dish out things that you don't know that people are watching you, but you are living that life. You are a life of discipline, a life of commitment, a life of appreciation, a life of love, but you are still the head of that bank. And so people are able to look at your life and see Christ. Exactly. Because the Bible says these are the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit are kindness, love, perseverance and you know the, your your mem, your staffs are able to see that even in the place of difficulty you are able to maintain your calm why because much more than the difficulty is the god backing you glory to jesus wow that's, a, that's that's mentorship for me so I'm, I'm convinced that by the grace of god through my life and through like other leaders and um, our set man of god you know people the new set of people that god is meant for raising even through the revolution class that pastor bolach is doing yeah, exactly. are seasoned seasoned people that god is doing extraordinary work on so that you know we do not follow the patterns of the people of the ancient alone yeah. god is raising new standards and is commissioning it into the body of christ so and in all sectors this time around all so, sectors all sectors not all only in the church not only in the church i'm all grateful sectors. to god i'm oh. grateful to god to be a part of that yeah. and also be a vessel like not only for mentoring but also myself be molded into what god wants me to do and mm. become yeah mm. I, I, I mean listen to this i feel so emotional right now <laughs> like there's Thank a lot god. of emotions coming up because growing up i never imagined i thought this thing called god would just remain in church mm. i was talking to someone yesterday and i'm like the revival is coming the awakening has come we're gonna have you know women most especially women men who are wealthy you know who are in their lamborghinis their rolls royces their ferraris and we are hearing gospel music tones coming out of the speakers mm -hmm. they're just going to be channeled on nlp they're just going to be doing things it's just like it's not about the money anymore it's just about the image like you said of god and pastor Pelagi said something in the he said until we can prove that witchcraft is useless and we have not really started the work i mean i don't know what to say but the awakening feeling is coming back right now and uh, everyone who's watching i don't know you are not you may not have been here but grace is transferable yes grace is transferable and um before we before we go Homer is going to just share a word of prayer for all of you young people, especially women, because it's a season of women. She's just going to share a, a blessing, a prayer on all of you that are watching, all of you that feel like you do not belong or you don't deserve it. She's going to share a word of prayer. Wally as well is going to share a word of prayer for everyone in workspaces. And, you know, we're just going to round it up. God has been faithful. God has been faithful. This meeting is the first of many. Amen. Our children are going to look back and they will say, Mommy Kome, Daddy Wale, Daddy Shubes did a good work. And, you know, <laughs> we're good. here because these are archives for them to remind them that awakening happened for a reason. That's right. It happened to make life easy for them. It happened to show them that with God, nothing is impossible. So, Kome, I just want you to share your blessing, just okay. to pray a word of prayer. I just pray for every okay. young lady out there who needs hope and strength. All right. Um, first of all, the Bible says that God is omnipotent, He's yes. omnipresent, meaning that He's not limited by time, He's not limited by space, and irrespective of if the awakening had happened, has already happened, He can still touch you if only your heart is open. Yes. The Bible says that by faith, 
only through faith you will receive. And so I pray for everyone listening to us today in accordance with the will of God. Let it be unto you as the Lord has spoken concerning your life in the name of Jesus. Let grace be released. Let power for you to become all that God has called you to become. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. And lastly, I pray that the hunger, the desire to serve God, to know him, to walk in his ways let it be released upon your life that your life will truly be a sign and a wonder in the mighty name of jesus amen, amen. god amen. bless you i'll just pray according to the word of god in my heart at the moment and i'll just say that for everyone who is feeling helpless who feels they are not up to what they desire in god um I just pray for you today that you will not be helpless. That the Lord indeed, who is the helper of them who diligently seek him, would help you, would raise you up. And like he put a banner over the children of Israel with a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, in the name of Jesus, he will be with you. His presence will be with you. He said he will not leave us helpless, but he will send to us the comforter who will teach us all things and guide us into all truths. In the name of Jesus Christ, in your workplace, in, in everything that concerns you, you receive the helper and he will begin to teach you all things and guide you into all truth. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we speak upon everyone who feels lost. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. In the name of Jesus Christ. You begin to find your way in the name of Jesus. And according to his word that says, you will hear a voice that speaks from behind you when you are going to turn to the left or to the right. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not be directionless, but you will find direction in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord himself will comfort you on every side. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen, amen. Glory to Jesus. Come here. Thank, Thank you. you. You've been a blessing to so many ladies here. Thank you. Artists, Wale has been a Thank wonderful you. person. I've seen people talk about you and they say, Mr. Wale, awesome guy. And, you know, while they were praying, I felt a nudge in my spirit and that there's someone you were watching, you were not meant to be here, but you just came to this. And God is saying that you are telling yourself that I cannot. You know that God is calling you to this work of the kingdom. And you said you cannot. But what he is saying is, because I am, you can. So go and become. That is what God is telling you. He's saying, because I am, you can. So go and become. And and this is what the Spirit is doing in my heart. It's been an awesome time here. Thank you. It's been an awesome time here. We are saying you should subscribe, like, comment. Let us know what the heart of God. Let us know what the heart of God is in your life. Let's know what's going on in your life. And trust me. The next episode is going to be wonderful for everyone who's young, vibrant, something big is coming. So stay tuned and don't go anywhere. This is Slice. My name is Shibomi. I'm here with Wale and Kome. Thank you. And always remember, grace, grace, grace. This, this is, is our story. story. Till we meet again, God bless you.